I literally have no idea where that went. Cause I'm kind of running out of options at this point. Oh! What's going on guys? So we're gonna be doing some destruction testing today with some super ridiculously tough steel, S7 tool steel. Now in our pursuit for the ultimate blade, we first have to find the ultimate steel for our ultimate blade. S7 was one of the first on the list simply because of its toughness. Now, those of you who watched the last video will know that we are interested in a knife that stands up to batoning, which is a super ridiculously hard thing for a knife to do. And especially a knife of this size and weight. Right now, this rough grind is coming in at 2.4 ounces. 2.4 ounces for a knife that can baton. That's without scales or hardware or anything like that. Now, I already ran into a problem with the thickness of the material. I cannot find S7 in a thinner stock thickness than about 145 thousandths. However, I still think that uh, this blade might make a really good lightweight knife simply because look at all of that spine thickness that we still have on there. This should have absolutely no problem standing up to um, the abusive testing that we put it through today. Now this takes a while to heat treat so I'm going to get this thing in the oven and we'll get it heat treated and then we'll do some destructive testing. So while our S7 blade is in heat treatment, let's test our 1084 blade that we ground the other day. This thing is sitting at 2.3 ounces. I lost two tenths of an ounce by regrinding the spine area here a little bit uh that thinned the blade out a little bit but we still have the same blade length right now it's hitting at about four and a quarter inch total blade length we have plenty of spine thickness it's going to be interesting to see what this knife will do i've tempered it a little bit higher than i normally would for toughness unfortunately we're probably going to break it the handle's not working too well We need to devise a new handle. Try that. Okay guys, so what you're seeing here is a couple minutes worth of over an hour I was out here beating on this knife. I did everything that I possibly could to break this knife by hand, even with a temporary handle attached. Well, I'm definitely splitting some wood. I'm just splitting the baton, not the wood I'm trying to split. The wood I'm using was a piece of twisted up oak with all kinds of knots in it and it was really um, a nasty piece of wood. Zero damage yet. Tip still looks exactly the same. Not even a wibble bobble. And I was hitting this as hard as I possibly could. Even chopping through pieces in half crossways and focusing on the tip of the blade did absolutely nothing. Now I realize that this is uh, not scientific in the slightest. However, one thing that I did notice was just how springy this blade felt. There was a significant amount of flex every time the baton impacted the blade. Now we'll talk more about this later. All right guys, so it's actually the next day or it's a couple days later because I ran out of time tempering this thing because uh, it needed to temper for a while. This, the 1080 blade, ended up passing all of our tests with flying colors, but after going home and reviewing the footage, um, everything that I shot trying to break this, I don't think I tested it hard enough. So we're gonna go back out today, and well, first we're gonna grind a quick edge on this. We'll just flat grind it. It's gonna be really ugly. Uh, we'll put a quick secondary bevel on it, and uh, We'll put both of these up head to head and see if we can break them. After grinding the bevels here, check this out. 2.2, can you see that? 2.2 ounces. That is, well, it's a tenth of an ounce lighter than this one. So we're really close in weight here. That's a lot lighter than I thought it would be considering the uh, stock thickness that we're working with. So. If we can get scales on this under, uh, you know, three quarters of an ounce, we're under three ounces for this knife. 
And here we are back out testing the S7 blade. And another hour passed, hitting this blade as hard as I possibly could with zero breakage. Have to figure out something else here. It actually seemed like the only thing that I was going to break today was the temporary handle I attached the knife to. Well that lasted all of a couple of seconds. Yeah, I don't know guys, I'm kind of running out of options at this point. So you think you're hard on your knife? This ought to work. Oh yeah, that's much better. So after bolting the blade to a piece of angle iron, well, I still couldn't break it. Again, I'm only showing a small percentage of what I actually did due to time. And eventually I decided that I couldn't break it and had to do something about that. So I built the Blade Breaker 9000. This ought to be interesting. I'm gonna move everything back a little bit. There's the first hit. Blade didn't break. There's a piece of hardwood, this won't break. Oh! 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 Right there. I think it kind of goes to show you just how absolutely ridiculously tough this steel is. See it guys, it looks like we have a pretty refined grain there. Honestly, I thought for sure that it would have broken up here towards the tip somewhere. I mean, this is not, you know, a quarter inch thick blade, but wow, is this stuff tough. I mean, there's absolutely no way in a million years you're going to break this batoning, um, holding it in your hands. You need some sort of blade batoning contraption to break this. I mean, that's incredibly tough stuff. And as far as the edge, I don't really see any edge damage at all. Uh, we had a pretty rough edge on here. It was a, a pretty aggressive angle. It was shaving sharp when we started. Wow, it's actually still pretty sharp. Um, what? It's still so, I mean, it's pulling hairs off. It's definitely not a good shave, but after all that, this would make an awesome backpacking knife at two point, what was it? 2.2 ounces, 2.15 ounces before we did all this. I mean, come on. Look at the bolt. That's, I don't know if you can tell, but that's, it's bent like this, just a touch. Very interesting. So now it was time to break the 1084 knife. See, I realize that this isn't super scientific, but um, I think it, it at least goes to show you just how tough, you know, what what it takes to break this stuff, like, I mean, that's, that, you got some serious force there. All right, try it again. Oh, here's a good, there we go. <laughs> Stand back. Remember, this is a 2.3 ounce convex ground, 125 thousandths or eighth inch thick knife blade. The first two hits were light, with the third hit being much harder, and that's where it broke. So what's interesting here, guys, is if we look at the actual break, when the 1084 broke, it actually looks like it deformed a little bit or a lot before it broke. So it actually bent this bottom piece out. See if we can get this here on the camera. See how that doesn't line up? So this bottom piece bent kind of significantly. Now, the S7 
it'll go right back together. We could throw some super glue on that and glue it back together and probably still use it. But um, yeah, that, that looked like it broke clean off. Very clean break. Uh, the grain structure on both of these are very, very fine. Um, I, I wouldn't suspect anything different out of the S7. The 1084, we did do our normalizing cycles and he treated it like normal. We uh, tempered this slightly higher at around, uh, I don't have to go back and look, I think it was 440 degrees. So we had a little bit more springy blade and I apologize for the traffic noise. Yeah, I think this had a little bit more spring to it than the S7 did. And the funny thing is, is I could feel that when I was batoning. This felt a lot more solid. Even in the way that it broke, um, it kind of felt different. What did today's test tell us? Well, both of these steels, S7 and 1084, are ridiculously tough steels. If either of these were in complete knife form, you're never going to break them batoning, holding it with your bare hand, ever. Unless there was significant prying forces, meaning you were using it in this direction, trying to pry the wood apart. As long as you don't do that, you're never going to break either of these two knives batoning with a, uh, you know, with a handle on it and holding it with your bare hand. Uh, I'm really impressed. I thought for sure that we'd have problems up here in a tip, but both of the tips on these, I mean, they're, they look as good as new. We did have a little bit of blade bending. Um, again, I was not careful trying to pry these out of the wood and all that other stuff, but I'm not worried about that. As long as it stays in knife-like shape and knife-like form, then I, I can live with a little bit of that, as long as it doesn't break. Uh, this is still a usable knife, even with that bend in it. What does this tell me? I think it tells me that I might be safe to use slightly thinner stock. Now, using thinner stock is definitely gonna open me up to more bending like this, because you know we're gonna have significantly less strength here. The other downside about S7 is um, this will rust faster, I think, than any other steel that I've ever used. Literally, the second that I pulled this thing off the grinder, it had like a small coat of rust on it. That's not a super good thing for outdoor blades, uh, but we might be able to help control that with an acid etch, um, you know, maybe a coating later on. So yeah, from here, we'll move on to 3V. We'll uh, run a heat treatment on it, and we'll see what it does. I think right off the bat, I think I've got a, uh, a pretty good heat treatment for this S7 because the edge held up really well, uh, the blade held up really well, and again, you're not gonna break this. I think the only thing to do now is to test some more steel. We'll see what happens. I got some 01, I've got some uh, 3V. We'll uh, heat treat both of those, we'll do a video on those. Maybe we'll break both of those up into their, uh, uh, their own videos and go from there, and then at the end, We'll, uh, you know, I'd love to hear what you guys think. And I guess at the end, we'll kind of put all this information together and make a decision.